Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Looking at a book which has come to us from Cambridge University Press, and it's one of a number of books that are around at the moment, dealing with this particular um, theme. The title of the book is called Rethinking the Law School. It's got a subtitle, Education, Research, Outreach and Governance. It's been written by Carol Stolker, and my wife Elizabeth and I, we had a discussion about the book because this is one of a number of books we've, we've reviewed recently concerning the future of law studies, the degree studies and so forth. And we've given the review title Thought-Provoking and Controversial Commentary on Legal Education Worldwide because we're not just looking here at the... Uh, United Kingdom or England and Wales, we're looking at a much wider area. This is the book itself. There's the front, there's the side, and there's the back. There's a little bit of detail you can see at the back there. And there is, of course, uh, it's a hardback. Um, there is a very useful detailed index at the back. If I go backwards first, then you've got, a again, academic, it's at a very high academic level, detailed bibliography to justify all the assertions made. The bibliography goes on for a long uh, time. Then before that you have a glossary. Again, very useful. This is an international book, so it explains a whole range of things. For instance, just opening it, you've got the Lisbon Agreement, or rather the Lisbon Agenda. You've got the OECD, what that means, for instance. Then you've got all sorts of other little things. Um, so the, the glossary, there's the front of the glossary itself. Then after that, and I'm working backwards, we get to uh, the main conclusions on rethinking right at the end. And there, as you see, there is footnoting, which is to be expected. The uh, body copy um, is, is very substantial. You've also got paragraph numbering and subheadings for the various chapters. Now, at the front of the book, you've got a statement about what the book is in, about. That is repeated on the, the back cover. Then you've got the front itself. A nice little um, uh, dedication. Uh, I always like to mention those to uh, the author's uh, brother. And then contents there. You can see the various pages, 12 chapters there. And then you've got after that the glossary index and, uh, sorry, the glossary bibliography and index. The acknowledgements are very useful to show how much work has gone into this, and there's quite a lot on the acknowledgements. Uh, and then you've got an introduction. Law schools are fascinating institutions. I'll agree with that one, having been to one. Law being amongst the first four disciplines ever taught at university. There we go. That starts it off. And again, you've got a lot of detail with the footnotes. And then academics versus managers. Lovely. See, we're getting straight into the gloves are off straight into having a think about what we're going to do with a law school because in the past of course before I was just called to the bar I did the very first year of the um, bar the new type of vocational course prior to that it was very heavily uh, academically based and there are lots of arguments at the moment about how much academic content you have and how much vocational content you need certainly when it comes to practice because the academic stuff is very important uh, for jurisprudential reasons, philosophical reasons and so forth. But at the end of the day, if you're earning money, you are there to advise clients. And you've got to look at what the law is, how we adopt our own particular type of, of legal structure in England and Wales. Of course, it's a common law jurisdiction. And we go from there. This is what we say anyway about the book, which I found very interesting, I hasten, hasten to add. This book will certainly attract the attention of the academic and professional education community worldwide, especially those involved in designing and developing professional and academic law courses. Now, I've done that. Both my wife and I are fully qualified teachers, and I'm, of course, a practicing barrister at law. So I've got a, a, quite an interest in this area, uh, not just from the, being a holder of the PGCE, but to try and see where we're going to go in the future as I pass the mantle on to you know, new people coming up. This book's been published by Cambridge University Press and is one of a number of books on the market which, generally speaking, are either descriptive of the way law is currently taught 
at, say, certain universities, or which seek to set out or suggest new agendas for course content. The globalisation of business cultural activity and commercial practice, including legal services, has provided the impetus and often the inspiration for accelerating change in the methods by which law is taught. In, partic in particular, it can be observed in many areas that the orientation of certain law uh, courses has swung toward an international perspective, uh, which a lot of law schools might regard as a radical development. I would think, without mentioning too many names, Kingston University in particular, where they have concentrated and actually started looking at the, uh, the, the other legal systems within Europe, the German system, the French system. Uh, I thought that was a great step forward because I knew nothing about any other legal system, basically apart from the one in England, because that's of course what I was qualified to and which is where I practice. But you need to have that wider picture. So I welcome that from an academic point of view because it's, it's the gaining of more knowledge, seeing how people do things perhaps slightly differently uh, within our own membership of the um, EU. <clears throat> I think it's important to observe that in many areas the orientation of certain law courses has, as I say, swung towards this international perspective. Law schools, say the, or, or says the author Carol uh, Stolker, tend to think locally, not globally, and that's, that's right. Summarising the content of the book, um, he refers to its broader scope, both in terms of the range of nations and the succinct journey which it offers through uh, law schools on different continents and subject matters. And again, I think that's of help. Formerly Dean of the Leiden Law School, Professor Stolker has also been Rector Magnificus and President of Leiden University since early 2013, and his book takes readers, whether lawyers or not, on a rather fascinating journey, during which he discusses education in general and legal education in particular in a number of jurisdictions worldwide, and that's to be welcomed. It's not generally known whether there is any other book currently available that does this. I don't think I've seen one, um, so, but not that I'm particularly knowledgeable about it. So from that point of view, as well as others, we feel that the book provides considerable food for thought. And as I say, it's actually uh, giving one, opening up one's um, horizons quite substantially, the landscape being slightly different in other, other legal systems. Um, following a brief commentary on law schools in all shapes and sizes, the author moves on to discuss the salient characteristics of law, legal education in the US and the UK, followed by illuminating and often startling observations on legal education in the European continent itself, Asia, Australia, Latin America and Africa, and there's considerable comment and analysis throughout on methodology, research and governance. So rightly or wrongly, he appears a trifle dismissive of the way, ways and means by which lawyers are educated and trained in the UK and the US, and generally the common law countries um, he makes <laughs> certain comments about, which I will remain silent on. For example, he seems a tad distasteful that in England, one can still be called to the bar with a degree in classics or history followed by a one-year conversion course and further training at the Inns of Court. How fascinating in tones. Would we ever consider such a path in order to qualify as a medical doctor? Now, I have one issue here. I'm going to talk about how you, you um, actually recruit doctors, but as a member of the bar, we do look for people with a much wider general knowledge. So if you have a classics background or a language background or a science background, that, if you are pursuing, um, say, a tenancy in practice at the bar, will give you a great deal of extra brownie points, whether you like it or not, because, in fact, you are going to be offering something above and beyond what other people will have. But to counter that, I can think of silks that I have met who have degrees in history when they would like to have had a degree in law prior to becoming practicing barristers. So it works both ways. The point is that conversion courses and the bar vocational and training courses, or whatever you now want to call them, they are there to sort things out and assist you. At the end of the day, you still come out at the end of the process uh, with the groundwork 
in legal knowledge that you need. So I don't think there's a problem with that, but I do welcome that wider um, knowledge and, and areas of disciplines covered. And I think for a medical doctor, for instance, in this day and age, most doctors have to have some legal knowledge because they are giving expert evidence quite often. And that, again, is very important to bear in mind. Let me continue with the review, having got that off my chest. Likewise, the author also refers, somewhat disprovingly, disapprovingly, to US legal scholarships, where it is the students, he says, who run many of the scientific legal journals, including evaluating their content and final editing. Well, we know about that to a certain extent with certain reviews. Again, he adds, this is fascinating. Would we ever consider having students run the prestigious journals Nature or the British Medical Journal? Well, if they want to get some experience of journalism, I think it's nice to have a balance, personally, um, but you don't at the same time want to have too much emphasis one side or the other. Besides, younger people coming up are probably going to have a much more refreshing and challenging approach than possibly older persons like myself who have been around a bit. So you can see that there is a, a difference there too. I think the balance though with respect to the learned author has to be, um, you have to go for that if you can. Let me conclude by saying one wonders if this latter comment that I've just referred to includes prestigious journals like the Harvard Law Review. If so, wow, those guys are really going to get mad. We should remind ourselves here that the US, not to mention the UK and a number of other common law countries, are participative democracies where certainly university students are encouraged to, uh, to participate. And I'm recording this during the general election campaign, where there's a lot of participation. There may be a lot of people who are not interested, and 7.5 million have not registered to vote. But you've still got a lot of participation, and we are talking about people in the senior professions, like medicine and, and certainly and law, where in fact you've got the creme de la creme, to use the phrase. And what better way to learn the disciplines of legal research then than to, with a more rounded education, which is what I was saying a little earlier about the type of person we would be wanting to offer a tenancy to. You want someone that, as I say, got a more rounded approach. Well, of course, Stolker is entitled to his point of view, and I don't dispute that at all, but he's making some valid questions, uh, raising some valid questions, uh, especially bearing in mind that he's written what we think is an excellent book, although one might question whether this particularly, particular analogy is perhaps as apt as it might be. The two above uh, mentioned journals I've just dealt with deal uh, retrospectively, or respectively rather, with the exact sciences and medical research, don't they? So therefore, um, you are going to be looking at some very detailed information coming out. So while some lawyers out there may, may claim that the law is an art, there aren't many who would have the gall to call it a science. And it isn't really, it is an art in that sense. The art of advocacy being a classic phrase that we use. So finally, nevertheless, this book with its international perspective takes a welcome and refreshing, uh, refreshing if occasionally controversial look at legal education worldwide and therefore provides ample ap am ammunition for lively debate and of course recent argument for encouraging necessary changes in legal education in response to the changing needs of the 21st century. And that's what this is about, because we cannot just stand still. We have to move forward with certainly with IT changes and all the things that are happening at the moment. Anyone in legal education anywhere would do well, we think, to acquire a copy of this book to read. I found it very interesting, but I'm coming to it as both a, a teacher and as a practicing uh, barrister. The publication date is set at 2014. Here it is again, interesting front cover, bit of a jigsaw there of, of liberty. There we go, there's the back. Just opening it right in the middle. What makes legal scholarship vulnerable? There we go, right in the middle. You've got some footnotes. So you've got some very big questions being um, asked. Three perspectives on legal research, for instance. Well, we all have to do legal research, whether it's about uh, something that's incredibly uh, complex or whether it's something relatively simple for a judge in a court. Um, what we do have, by the way, I did like this, 
there are lots of nice little conclusions at the end of the various chapters which I found very helpful. It's a good read and an important read for anybody looking, um, certainly those PGCE holders who may be managing um, education, especially legal education in the future, I think will find this very useful um, as some way of looking at the type of curriculum development that you want. Thank you anyway to all concerned for I think a fascinating uh, review of where we are at the moment on rethinking the law school. Thank you. Bye-bye.